for Wrestling and Tweeting Mysteries is a show that exists for some reason and this is every episode reviewed of the show part one. Don't feel like going into any history or anything, so you just have to go look in the Wikipedia page or something for the history. The very first episode of the series is the cat who knew too much. I have no idea why it's even called that. But the story of this episode is that the incredibly great and amazingly named character of Louisiana hires the classic beloved Looney Tunes character, gangster characters, Rocky and Muggsy to kidnap Tweety right before his big singing canary competition. So, uh, yeah. He also distracts Granny by taking her to rent a restaurant, but it's just in one scene and not important. And then later, when his plan is revealed, it's revealed that he wants to sabotage the singing competition by having Rocky and Muggsy posing as Granny and Tweety, respectively. He also tried to compete in the last year's singing canary competition using a gold queen to Daffy Duck and he loses to Granny and Tweety from the previous year. And he plans to use the singing canary contest prize money. He also plans to sell Tweety to a random restaurant to get a bunch of money and that's basically what happens in the episode. The main takeaway from this episode is that Louisiana's plan is not actually even goodly explained the way that makes sense. I guess his plan was to sabotage and embarrass Granny and Tweety by having some random sus imposters being them in the competition. I don't really know why he said to kidnap Tweety. Maybe the plan was for Tweety to oppose as his canary, but they already have the Tweety Sinky being played for the other fat guy in the Tweety costume, so it would sound exactly the same. So I don't think that would have any impact on them choosing the winner for the competition. So it's not really explained, and in the end, there's awful dialogue with him just wanting the money. So why doesn't he just find other ways of getting the money? It's not explained. And, yeah. Also, apparently Granny and Tweety are famous enough that them winning the canary competition ends up with the newspapers. So maybe they've won it every single year and he wants to win for once. But it's not really expanded or explained upon. And, uh, yeah. I know this is the first episode and the writers need to be adjusted to writing actual stories and good mysteries. But there's barely even a story or an actual mystery. And it's just, uh, bloated with random slapstick antics. And there's only a couple horrible, unfunny Sylvester torture scenes for no reason. Which will come way more abundant in later episodes. Also, there's a bunch of over-exaggerated uh, Cajun stereotypes in this episode. <clears throat> and there's also a lot of Tweety singing. And also, Joe Lasky Tweety is super annoying and I don't like it. So him singing just makes it even more annoying and horrible. 5 out of 10. Not a classic. The next episode is Platinum Wheel of Fortune, which sounds like it's supposed to be a pun, but I don't know if it actually is. Anyway, in this episode, a prize in phrase Platinum Roulette Wheel is stolen right before it's able to be revealed to France, and Granny just so happens to be driving in the Grand Prix, <laughs> Grand Prix taking place in France. A random French guy who also owns a Pepe Le Pew bootleg cousin edition of him talks about him trying to steal the wheel right before it was stolen, and he's barely in feature anywhere else except later where he makes a joke about Hector taking a shit. And then Sylvester gets dressed up in a skunk costume by a failing magician. And then there's a rip-off scene from Showbiz Bugs where Daffy gets sold in have except now it's Sylvester. So, yeah, really coming full circle or whatever. And then I can't believe it's not Pepe Bootleg Cousin Edition. It's horny for Sylvester in the costume. Then there's some classic Pebble Le Pew style antics. Then Granny is framed for the stealing of the Platinum Roulette Wheel. And, uh, yeah, she's captured by the police. But then the next scene, she's just able to drive in the race. There's no scene of her in jail or anything being actually explained. Then later, Tweety just presses a random button on a bullshit out of nowhere contrived and contrived and convoluted clue machine. They just get a random clue and then Granny makes up a random explanation that makes no sense and there's even a joke about her just making it up and it making no sense. So yeah, that's really amazing writing. And then it turns out the thief in the end is the failing magician who barely shows up only in one scene. And his reputation was ruined by Granny exposing his magic trick, mind reading trick for being phony. And then he wanted Granny to be arrested and framed for that for some reason. The plan of Rulay will being stolen has to be so intricate and specifically planned for Granny to be in France at this specific moment. So that means that he'd waited all this time for these specific circumstances just to do this. The complete stupidity and nonsense making of the mystery being solved in the heaviest quotations imaginable brings this down a bit, but it's entertaining and great animation, great voice acting, great music and slapstick antics and things. Yeah. Even though this 
This episode is way more of a mystery and story and plot and things going on. But the random non-mystery related antics also relate to the main story. Also, they're actually entertaining. Unlike in episode 1 where the story is way too convoluted and moronic and the antics that ensue not connected to the story aren't even entertaining or goodly executed. So that's why this episode is good and the first one is shitty. This episode is about an evil doppelganger version of Granny sounding the great Granny name by committing heinous crimes. Leading to the real Granny traveling to Denmark in order to clear her name. With the detective watching every move, Granny then checked into a hotel with her doppelganger also checking into the same hotel. I don't know if that was planned or if it just happened to happen. And then later it's revealed that the villain all along was Mugu Gai Pan, a guy with an incredibly stupid name who's not in the episode before this. So, yeah, not really a mystery, more just a villain being revealed with a dumb motivation. Anyway, the motivation is that he was friends with Granny and told she found out the full stupidity of his full name. So then he was so mad that he decided to commit crimes and free Granny to have her be taken up to the police. So it's kind of like in the last episode, except less stupid and idiotic. And then he was revealed at a pastry convention, and then he appears to be captured and away by a police car. But then it's revealed that it's another doppelganger Granny. Out of that, it was the real Granny in the police car. And he's just roaming free, screaming about how free he is without anyone noticing somehow. I don't know if it was just another random doppelganger Granny if it was the real Granny in the police car in the end. It's not really elaborated on or explained at all. Added enjoyment comes from the evil clone sus imposter slapstick style antics. So that elevates the episode. Also, the usual great TMS animation and the voice acting and music and things is also good. Specific praise to June Frey doing a fantastic double role as Granny and Evil Granny. Anyway, a really great episode, and it's a lot better than the previous two episodes. And there's really a miss. You watch a straightforward villain with a straightforward, if dumb and idiotic and moronic uh, motivation. I think it'd be better if they just did these villain with motivation stories, which them slapstick antic filler and things that rather shouldn't do a mystery because they just completely fail as shown in the first two episodes. The fourth episode is Ship Off the Old Castle and what happens in this episode the famous Blarney Stone of Ireland is stolen. So Granny's called in to solve the mystery. Local shop owners are mad because no one is coming to Ireland due to the famous stone's absence leading to the loss of money. Granny then stays in the obligatory seemingly haunted house and then random things happening and she almost dies and stuff. The villain turned out to be a random recurring character from early in the episode who wants people to buy his Duffy stone, and also his name is Duffy. That's not important, but you know. His motivation isn't actually explained. This episode is just kind of boring and unremarkable of an episode, at least in the first episode. Well, one, that was the series premiere. I question why they would lead off with such a not good episode. Also, it incorporates some classic Ling Chun's characters, and also there's the idiotic character names and stereotypes. That made the episode more interesting, but this episode doesn't really have any of that. And yeah, the animation is way less good because it's not handled by TMS. The voice acting is still good, the music's still good. There's way more of a plot and story and things happening in this episode, but the antics are way less goodly executed. And there isn't really a mystery, nor is there an actual villain in the episode. It's more just a random stupid idiot guy doing random stupid idiot things, and it's not even explained in the... The guy being revealed happens in the very end, and there's no one else around except this random police guy who's also a recurring character in the episode. So, um, yeah, it's just kind of a boring episode. Not likely that I would ever watch again or really think about it for any reason besides me making this video. There's also some classic Tweety Nightmare fuel in this episode. Sleep well. Huh. Something's fishy about this. That's because you ordered fish tacos. Oh, yeah. None of these just Japanese stereotypes. Ahoy. Today's episode, well, one of today's episodes, something's fishy around here, boy. In a probably ironically TMS animated episode, Granny discovers that Charlie in the world's largest tuna has been stolen from Tokyo. And then later, after a bunch of nonsense antics, it's revealed that some person named Albacore hired an assistant to steal the tuna. And her, along with a bunch of other protesters, want the tuna to be free. So, uh, yeah, that's connected, I guess. And she also reveals that she wants to steal the fish in order to keep it safely at her own house. So, uh, yeah, I guess them doing all the protesting wasn't doing any good. She decided to take more drastic measures. I guess was just supposed to make an inference. But I think that since this is a mystery show for kids, they should actually explain it and not expect stupid, idiot, idiot minds to actually make inferences and get the story. And this episode elevates itself from the previous episode. First off, there's better animation. And secondly, even though there isn't really a mystery that's well executed, there is a sort of villain perpetrator type person where there's an actual 
resolution to the story and an actual motivation for the villain that makes sense, even if it isn't elaborated upon. And there is a bunch of Sylvester torture antics, which is really prevalent in this episode, and it's just kind of mean-spirited and cruel for absolutely no reason. In the old Sylvester and Tweety cartoons, Sylvester slapstick antics that happen towards Sylvester are happening because of his pursuit of Tweety, but here it's just a bunch of people beating him up and Hector beating him up, even if he isn't actually doing anything to anyone, including a weird, disturbing, gross, and uncomfortable scene of Sylvester... Hiding inside of a dead fish, flopping around and getting chopped up. It's so weird and so gross. Why would they even include that? It's a shame that really good animation from a really good studio is wasted on such a mediocre episode. But, uh, yeah, that's just how it is. This episode takes place on a cruise ship, which doesn't really have anything to do with anything. And it's also bingo-related, which does have something to do with anything. Granny is invited on a free cruise and then a famous bingo player is hit in the head with an anvil so Granny has to take his place. And famous bingo players continue to be mysteriously and progressively cartoony and ridiculously disappearing and killed. That's basically what happens. And then, uh, after a bunch of stupid moronic antics, the aggressively stupid villain with his aggressively stupid motivation is then revealed. And the motivation is that the villain wanted to kill all the top bingo players so then he could win the competition and then get the prize money in order to attend clown school. It's not really hinted at anywhere else in the episode. So, uh, yeah, it's not really a good mystery or a story with clues or any sort of compelling villain or motivation that makes sense. But the mystery-related antics aren't totally egregiously boring and stupid. And, uh... Sylvester and Tweety side parts of the episode aren't really that bad, except for the parts with Hector, because he's just being an asshole and Sylvester almost dies. Amazing. This seems like another one of those straightforward villain, straightforward motive stories that they did earlier with the best episode of the series so far. But there's also a part where the names of the people who were killed spell out bingo. So it seems like this puts some sort of big mystery reveal, but not really any clues besides that big revelation moment at that part. So maybe they should have just had it be a villain with a motivation instead of trying to have it be a mystery and have it not really connect to anything else in the episode. So, uh, yeah, there's actual mystery parts where it's a cohesive story that makes sense and it's focused on enough for you to understand what's going on. And uh, there's less of Sylvester and Tweety's slapstick antics than the previous episode, but there's also parts of where it seems like Hector wants, really wants to kill Sylvester for some reason. So, uh, yeah, that makes it less amazing than it was before. This is basically the same amount of interestingness and quality as the other lower-end episodes, like The Cat Who Knew Too Much and whatever episode was a 6 out of 10 on this list. But first off, this TMS, so it's good animation. And secondly, the mystery is actually interesting and entertaining enough to make sense, but I guess it's kind of dragged down by the Sylvester and Tweety segments, where it's basically kind of the complete exact opposite in the other episodes. So when I kind of mediocre, but, you know, uh, good. And I guess you can watch it and not die, unlike other episodes. Well, that's it for part one, and as a bonus, here's some of my totally real, not staged or planned live reactions. I could be doing something better with my time, but no, I don't want to do that for some reason. Yeah, here we go, boy. I'm starting totally legal, official, not big, like non piracy app. I mean, sorry. This is gonna be so great. Oh, better, we gotta. Why? Why does this worldwide published magazine just call her Granny Survivor actual name? Dumb. I'm trying to think of the virus just in that semester. He almost died! Oh! <laughs> there he is. Good thing Puddy Daddy's minimum daily iron was. I'm sure an actual game of bingo would be more interesting than the episode. Cool cat! Cool cat! Tonight for the episode! Tonight for the episode! Oh!